How's it going, everybody? Driver53 here, and today we're going to go over which crop is best to make seeds using the new AGI Pack DLC that is available from Giants. Now, this is a pretty cool mod. It comes with a bunch of augers, and it comes with some silos here. We're not going to go over everything, only just the ones that I have right here in front of me. If you want to check out the other augers, DJ Goham did a fantastic job taking a look at all the equipment. I highly recommend going and checking out his video. But what we're going to do here today is we're going to make some seeds. Yes, we get to make seeds now with this DLC, and we get to use this AGI Storm FX right here. Another new element to the game is this high quality seed treatment right here. You do need this to be able to use with this Storm FX to be able to make your seeds. And where are you going to find this Storm FX? Well, it's going to be in our belt systems right here. You're going to go across to where all your mods are at. And you can see that we've got one, two, three, four, five new augers right here. The one we're going to look at today is this AGI Storm FX. And the only modification you could do is the wheels. You get a BKT or a Trailerborg version here. And then for the seed treatment, you can need to come down here to pallets, go all the way across. You're going to see seed treatment liquid right there. You can be able to buy this in one pallet at a time. It's going to cost you $3,450. It's going to give you 280 liters though. And you want to make sure whenever you're using this auger right here that you have your seed treatment pretty close by. It will automatically fill back up. But if you start seeing it getting low, go grab another pallet. Now these are heavy. You are not going to be able to lift these uh, by hand. And for the auger right here, you are going to be able to get into it. And as you can see, it will go up and down just like all the other augers. And if you have the right bumper and the right analog, this bottom tray section right here will go up and down for you just to add a little bit more realism. Also, it will go forward and back just like all the other augers. So we want to make sure that this is over top of our next auger right here. Now, you don't have to use this complicated setup like I have. I just wanted to show off what some of these other ones were. This one right here is pretty cool. You actually have to have a tractor to run this one. It does not have its own power source, but you'll be able to put in right here. And then it is tall enough to go in the top of the silo. And then the other auger right here is the BCX3 1549. And as you can see, this auger right here is running. We have it underneath our fill point right there. For the most part, we may have to adjust it a little bit here in a second. This one right here, we've got these lined up on top of each other. This one here is over top of our silo. And then our trailer right here has a bunch of canola in it. What we're going to do is go ahead and dump this in. And as it's doing that, you're going to see that this is going to fill up. And then coming out the other end, we have seeds actually coming out of here. And then up there, you have seeds coming out of that. And then now you have seeds going into your trailer. Now, this small trailer that we had over here was only 1,600 liters. But as you can see, if I look at this, I'm showing that this still has about 1,200 liters going into it. And the seed treatment, it's going down, but then it's going to fill back up because it's going to grab another bottle there. And then if we go over here, we can see that now we have 1,800 liters of seeds. What in the world's going on? Yes, each crop type that you can make seeds from is going to give you a different amount of seeds. It's pretty cool. Each one has its own ratio. As you can see, our auger has stopped. So what I need to do is just reposition it a little bit. I found that this one here tends to walk around a little bit. So if you've got a really long process going on with a lot of seeds, you might want to think about having a different auger right here. This one is the only one that I found that is actually moving. I don't know if it's because it's on. I mean, I'm not hitting it with anything. We can also see right there, it just stopped. And then every once in a while, you just have to hit start filling again. All right, so our silo is empty now. We don't have anything over here. This one here is empty too, nothing there. All right, so that means everything has been processed. So now we have 4,909 liters. And if we take that and divide by 1.6, because that's how big our original trailer was, 1,600 liters, that's going to give us 3,068 liters. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this chart right here. And the first column that you see, it says seeds per 1K of crop. And what that is, that's the ratio that you're going to get here. If you put in a thousand liters of each one of these crops, this is how many seeds it's going to produce for you. And what you can see here is that each crop has its own ratio on how many seeds it's going to make per thousand liters. And you might be thinking, well, I want to use soybeans to make all of my seeds. Well, the problem with that is we know that soybeans doesn't always give you the best yield, the highest yield, right, in volume. Now, it may be a great selling price, but it's not always a great volume. And that's where this next column comes in here. It's base yield for one hectare. 
And we can see for wheat, you have 8,900 liters. And that is going to be for a field that has absolutely nothing done to it. That is base game yield. So if you've done no plowing, you've got weeds in it, you've got no lime on it, you've got no fertilizer, you haven't mulched it, and you haven't rolled it, that's what you're going to get right here. And this is zero yield bonus. That's what this value is right here. And now you can see that barley is actually 9,600. And if we look at soybeans that had the best um, ratio for seed to crop, it's actually only 4,500 liters is all the yield that you're going to have. So what I've done here for the next column is go ahead and combine these two columns together. I took the column one and I multiplied that by the base yield. Now, the way I did it is say for wheat, I multiplied 2000 by 8.9 and I got 17,800. And you can see all the way down, all of these are only 23 liters difference between the absolute best and the lowest. So Giants has done a fantastic job here of making it so that one of these crops doesn't stand out and give you an advantage over any of the others. So looking at these three columns right here, it doesn't really matter which crop you turn into seeds. They're all going to give you really close to the exact same amount of seeds at the end of the day. So it's up to you now to decide which ones you want to use based on selling price or based on if you've got an abundance of something. Another thing to consider is how much seeds you actually had to put in the ground to be able to make that hectare of that crop. And you can see here in the next column, I've got the seed population per hectare. So for wheat, barley, oats, it's going to be 500 liters of seed per hectare. For corn, it's going to be 400. For soybeans and sunflower, it's 300. And then for canola and sorghum, it's 200. So the next column over here is going to tell you exactly how much that's going to cost you to actually put the seeds in the ground, and that's based on the store price of $900 for 1,000 liters. And the sorghum and canola are only going to cost you $180 to be able to plant that field. Now, like I said, that's with no fertilizer, that's with no fuel cost, no worker fees, anything like that. Just product of the seeds itself, it is the cheapest one. And considering that your total seed produced is going to be the same on all of these, I think those are the ones you're going to want to do. So in summary, I don't think that there's one crop that stands out above the other. I mean, the ones that are only $180 versus $450, I mean, yeah, it's almost $300 difference, but $300 isn't that much in the grand scheme of Farming Simulator here. So great job, Giants, on being able to get these exactly the same so the one doesn't give us an advantage over the other. That's going to be it for today, everybody. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you would. If you want to stay up to date on all my future videos here on the channel, Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell too. And while you're waiting on those future videos, go and check out one of these two right here. Have a great day, night, evening, everybody. Until next time, this is Driver53 signing off.